Here we go. Carbon-14 dating assumes that carbon dioxide on Earth today has the same radioactive content it did centuries ago. If this is true, the amount of carbon-14 absorbed by a tree that grew hundreds of years ago should be the same as the amount of carbon-14 absorbed by a tree growing today. A piece of charcoal has 19% as much carbon-14 as a new piece of charcoal. Knowing that the half-life of carbon-14 is 5,715 years, how long ago was the ancient tree burned to create the charcoal? Now, this is not a science class, it is a calculus class. And our solving of these separable differential equations led us into our work here with exponential growth and decay uh, models. So there's probably a nice easy formula if you're doing science all the time that uh, will streamline, streamline this process, but for right now, uh, because we're not in a science class, we're just hopefully recognizing that we're talking about here exponential decay. So going to that model, A is equal to C times E to the KT power. And, you know, we need to come up with a formula so I can finish this problem. So we have an initial amount, a final amount. We have E, which is, of course, approximately 2.718. And I don't know my constant. So that's what we need to figure out right now using the fact that our half-life is 5,715 years. Half-life, you lose 50%. When you talk about percentage of change, the, if you don't care about the amount of change, but the percent of change, the initial amount is arbitrary. So let's just say that we start off with two units of this carbon-14, and we end with one. I'm saying units because I'm, again, not a science teacher, so I don't want to say the wrong unit and have someone mad at me. So we start off with two of something, we end up with one. We have that times e to the k t power, <clears throat> actually we know what t is of course, right? It's 5715. Divide both sides by 2 and you'll see that 50% come up. I could have just said that where our initial amount was 1 and our final amount was 0.5. So dividing both sides by 2, we get 0.5 is equal to e to the 5715 times k power. I'm trying to keep my board from rattling there, by the way, in case you wondered what I was doing. You can't solve for a variable when it's in the exponent, so we're going to take the natural log of both sides, since that's easiest with our base of E here. Of course, we're using the natural log or log base E because that'll cancel out with the base of E on this exponential function. And we get the natural log of 1 half is equal to 5715k. And then finishing this, up by, finishing this up by dividing both sides by 5715, we get, and I'm going to turn this around as well, we get k is equal to 1 over 5715 times the natural log of 1 half. And you can probably make that a decimal right now. I'm going to keep it in exact form for a little bit longer. I would uh, caution you, though, probably rounding off very much at all is going to cause your final answer to be off a lot. So if you're going to make that a decimal approximation now, at least go out four or five decimals. At, uh, but I'm going to leave it in exact format to minimize the round off error as much as possible. Okay, so now I'm writing, well, I'm putting this in the way of my problem. So let's get this down here. <coughs> my advanced picture in picture. And <clears throat> now that we know the constant, we can write our, well, sort of our equation, right? We have our final amount is going to be equal to our initial amount times uh, CE to the 1 over 57, 1, 5 times the natural log of 1 half T. Okay, well, I have a lot of information here, right? I know that we're, I'm looking for T. How old is this piece of charcoal? Uh, our final amount is 19% of what we started with, so I could let our initial amount be 100 and A be 19, and that would add an extra step of having to divide both sides by 100, or I could start with an initial amount of 1, and then say my final amount is 0.19 units of this carbon-14. If I started with 100, I wouldn't have 19, and so on, whatever. But uh, initial amount 1, that means I can just write that as 0.19. Times E 
or 1e, raised to the, well, I don't like the way I wrote that, 1 over 57, 1, 5, times the natural log of 1 half t. <clears throat> Again, you can't solve for a variable when it is in the exponent, so to get rid of that base e, I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. That's going to cancel that out, and we get the natural log of 0.19 is equal to 1 over 57, 15, natural log of 1 half t. We need to, if we're going to solve for t, we're going to multiply both sides by 57, 15. We're going to divide both sides by the natural log of 1 half to undo that multiplication. And with our scientific calculators, is you know how we can type so much of that in at once and not have you know hardly any round off error, or maybe none at all, or whatever. I'm going to round mine off to the nearest hundredths place, but t comes out to be approximately 13,692 point. Seven three years old, and that's one old chunk of charcoal. So, and that's also the end of my last example. I'm Mr. Teru. Go do your homework.